Hi, folks. Today, we're super excited because we have with us Michelle J. Lamont. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her, and then I'm going to let her explain what brought her to the place where she is today in her life. So she went from or orphanage to Oprah to omnipresent. She's an influential entrepreneur and a manifestation guru. Michelle J. Lamont is expanding and amplifying her mindfulness message to help you truly manifest everything you desire to do and to do it quicker than most can believe. Michelle created a podcast to help each and every one of us dig deep and to learn and follow our lives through intention via thought, via our thought processes. Each episode will be to help you with your own conscious manifestation power that you already have and learn how to use it to its fullest extent in transforming your dreams into reality. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hello, everybody. And hi, Carol Ann. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. Awesome. Now, I want to quickly, before we delve into you and you know, what brought you to where you are today. Yeah. Let's just explain to folks real quickly that this is not some kind of like fake science or kind of like um, the secret on steroids kind of thing. You know, let's just let folks know right away what to expect so they don't go, oh, no, not another one of these podcasts and click away. Well, Carol Ann, you've listened so far, right? To each and every one. So... What is the biggest difference you think between other this type of podcast and my podcast as the viewer, as the listener? Um, what do you see as the biggest difference? And then I can tell you what I tried to create. Awesome. Oh, well, from the get go, I felt very connected to you, like you were talking to me personally. And, I, and I've listened to so many podcasts and I never got that vibe before. And I really felt like you've been through it and that you're speaking from a place that I've never really heard anybody speak to. I felt like it was more about me than it was about you. And it didn't have any like pseudoscience craziness. It was very grounded in like our spiritual essence and I felt immediately connected to everything that you were talking about, so much so that I couldn't wait to listen to the next podcast. Well, then, I don't know that I could even explain it any better than that. <laughs> um, you know, like you and like so many other people, I felt like the majority of the time when I was seeking enlightenment, I was turned off by it, and I didn't even attempt this road after you know, dipping my toe in when I was in a very depressed state because to me it seemed as if everybody was almost talking down to me mm. or, or um, explaining, like you said, some sort of, um, you know, abstract science to, to make their point where you, you know you couldn't argue it because um, it was just so far-fetched that mentally you couldn't even connect to it. Right. So for me, I thought, you know, what is it like what, when people go and hear me speak prior to 2020? One thing that I found was after I would speak was the number of people that would wait in line to take a photo with me or to tell me how I've changed their life in some way or another. And I found it um, humbling, but at the same time, I realized that I am speaking to each and every individual person when I do these in the way that I would want to be spoken to, in the way that I would want to learn it, in a way that makes it seem ob obtainable because it is. And it felt so much to me so many times that the, the information that people had was solid, but the delivery was just um, egotistical in a way or... Um, it wasn't something that I could really relate to. And if you know me, if you've ever been coached by me or gone to one of my speeches, the one thing that I think that everyone says is that they felt like the message was just for them. 
That's so funny that I said the same thing. Everyone, and this is the first time I'm talking to you. It is. And I think the reason is, is because I am you. And I, I do believe that I am everybody's brother and sister. And I do believe that I will learn from each and every person that I meet. And that I have a very specific purpose here on earth. And in, in my best way, I want to make sure that People don't walk away from their ability to manifest anything into their lives because this person seemed unreal or not authentic. And so I thought, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all the way in and I'm going to tell you everything, regardless of how that image could make somebody think of me or uh, judge me. And I took the judgment out. If you want to judge me, go ahead. Um, and if not, then I think that no matter who you are or what stage of life you're in, you will find rela a re relatability to me because of my authenticity and my desire to bring you closer to your spiritual self and to take all of my vanity and all of my ego and, well, does this make me sound good? Does it make me sound bad? You know, mm. all that kind of just that mess i just said I, I don't want that you know i just want it to be real yes and, and i want people to know that they are truly loved and they are truly valued and that they were they are so so important here on earth and that each one of us have such a big big job to do and i don't want anybody to feel small and um or insignificant because of what's going on around us and um, and I think that that, um, that resonates with people. So my goal in, in creating this, um, this podcast is exactly what you said. And so it makes me feel like I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> but again, emotional, um, thinking about it, because it's exactly what I set out to do. Now, can you tell everybody what brought you? I mean, obviously not your entire life story, but what brought you from your deepest, darkest place to, oh, you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> um, I, can, I can see how deeply it resonates with you, and that's so wonderful. It's yeah. just, no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. No, go ahead. Ask the question. <laughs> what, um, what brought you from, like, point A to point B? to becoming this manifestation, you know, guru, this person who spends all of her time trying to bring others into like the light. That's the way I see it. Yeah. So how, what got you here? What got you to this point? Well, um, you know, like you said, I don't want to go through this whole life story because then you'll miss the podcast. Completely. Right. Um, right. And, and I'll give it all away. And I want you to go on the journey like you have. Um, but I'm a, on my mother's side, I'm a first generation American. And on my dad's side, I am a direct descendant of William Williams, who signed the Constitution of the United States. So that is I'm so awesome. A daughter of the American Revolution and yes. first generation American. My brothers were born in Colombia. Um, and that in itself is quite a story, you know, just in itself. Um, but after my mom died, I ended up, you know, growing up in a orphanage in Waco, Texas, and my father kept my brothers and my sister and just gave me away when I was 10. And although I had a successful business life, um, creating two very successful businesses, one was a retail store that I started with $250 and a car that went in first, third and reverse. Um, to five years later, rolling Domino's pizza dough, waiting tables, you name it, I did it. Um, to doing a million dollars in sales and opening inline stores and in major malls across North Texas, which is a top five city in the United States. To then opening a public relations agency where my very first client was Dancing with the Stars um, Sports Celebrity Edition with the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. And, um, I did it in a way that hurt so many people, including myself. 
And um, as much as I wanted to be a nice person, I was so broken and so disenfranchised with life um, that I stayed in a terrible marriage um, for way too long and very uh, mentally and verbally abusive. I remember, and I don't think I talked about this on the podcast because I, you know, I don't want to embarrass him or his wife now, but I remember um, one time him creating a weight loss contract and um, I would have to weigh myself in front of him um, and he would write it down. And depending on what the weight was, was depending on whether we would be intimate or not. Wow. And then I remember one time him saying that he was running out of ways of abusing me without hitting me. And when was I going to leave him? And I was so scared to be alone and so scared to, because I didn't have any family that I could really count on, you know. Um, everybody that really mattered was in Colombia, and I can't go to Colombia. Um, and they don't really know me anymore. They all moved, you know, the, the ones that are too, they're old now and they don't know me, you know. Um, so I was really scared to be alone. And of course, that's episode two after I filed for divorce from him. Um, I just couldn't see a way where I would have any value in this world. Um, making people famous or putting people, you know, getting people media coverage because I was then a publicist. Um, just didn't have any, you know, I just didn't have any passion for it, even though I was, in, and still am really good at it. Um, I wanted to die. And so once I tried to commit suicide and didn't die, I decided that I had to, I've come this far and everything that I had done up until this point led me here. Mm hmm and why was I here, right? And so after I started questioning that and started realizing that there was this absolute flip side to me that I had been manifesting my whole life, we all have. Um, I didn't really put the puzzle pieces together. I just thought I was, a, I was really good at willing things, you know? And so after I decided that I would really concentrate and figure this out is when I started my spiritual journey into this Kundalini awakening and spiritual awakening that allowed me to completely change the trajectory of my life, um, the way I looked at things, um, the way that the universe played with me, um, and the way I could communicate in an energetic and spiritual way. Um, I knew that I couldn't just sit by and enjoy my my great life um, without honoring what I had learned. And for me, um, being able to teach people and walk people down this path, it's the greatest joy of my life because I know I've only had the podcast for three weeks. And I've had two people message me that one of them was attempting suicide the day she found my podcast. And the other one was heavily considering it. And there's two people on the earth right now that probably wouldn't be here if I hadn't have done it. Wow. And that's, and, and, to, and today is the actual three weeks of the podcast. And I found out yesterday that I've had over a thousand downloads in three weeks. That's crazy. Now, downloads means when people listen, right? Correct. Right. So, a thousand different times somebody wanted to hear what this message was. Or, you know, and, and, and that's, that's to me just a, an indication for my angels and my guides saying, keep going. It's only going to get better. This is just three weeks. And I set with the intention of helping one or helping millions. I have no goal. I just want to go where the spirit wants me to go and my higher self guides me. And, um, and so every time somebody messages me, which is every single day now about, I listened to episode nine, seven times. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> um, it, it gives me more and more incentive to do it. And when I even started the podcast, I actually wrote out 102 episodes in 30 minutes. What? Yep. 
That's crazy. It just flowed out. Yes. You know, yeah. it's like I was channeling it. I mean, I just was like, number 22, number 75, number 102. And then I, I hired a podcast coach to organize everything for me and to load everything up, but to edit it and then somebody to create the music and all that kind of stuff. And she does, I mean, countless ones of these. Very uh, no-nonsense kind of chick. If you ever know people from Jersey, kind of like Oh, that. yeah. All right. So <laughs> I love my Jersey peeps. I have family there. So I, I spent a lot of time in New York a lot. Um, so she's like that and she heard rock bottom that was the second one i had done and i was just, i had just recorded two in one day and i was like what do you think of this this is my attempt at a podcast and i sent her the first two and she calls me from the airport um in florida she was heading to chicago or someplace and she was like so like yeah she goes no joke i'm in tears i'm like what's wrong and she was like, no, I just listened to episode two and episode one. And I don't know how you found me. I don't know why you're using me, but thank you. And this is going to help so many people. You're going to do so much good on the earth. And for her to be so connected to it, where she's, she's listening to podcasts all day long. That's her job. And she told me in the beginning. Don't take it personal that I'm not going to be complimentary and roses and flowers. It's just not my thing. Right. And to get that call, um, I, I hung up the phone and I was crying because I was like, is she real? Are people really going to like this? I mean, I know what it's like when you're in an audience, but to be in your home and to be in your car and to be intimate with you, um, I thought, okay, you know what? I, I put it all out there. I mean, very few people knew my suicide story. Even my closest friends, I didn't tell people. I was, you know, so um, so used to being protective of everything and keeping everything hidden that once I did that, I knew I just had to keep going and be as honest and as truthful and as straightforward as possible because if I was going to do it, I was going to go all the way or not at all. Now... Are you at some point going to, and of course I'm going to have the URL to your podcast running across the screen throughout. Um, so folks, and I'll also put a link in the description too, where they can head on over. And I just want to say real quickly, I really recommend that anybody listening to this needs to head over and listen to Michelle's podcast. Even if you do one a day, you have to go over because it's, life altering it really is by the time you get through them it'll definitely make i think a dramatic change in the way people think and maybe maybe even of course more than that like whatever problems they're having but how are you eventually going to write a book someday a, like take your podcast series and turn them into a book like where where do you intend to go with this well um you know, it's funny, when I was a publicist, um, the very first, I haven't talked about this yet, so as a podcast listener, you're getting all this stuff I haven't talked about yet. <laughs> um, when I was a publicist, I was doing such phenomenal work in PR that this guy came to me and asked me, you know, can you write a book? And I was like, what are you talking about? I've got 60 employees, I've got four stores, I don't have time. So I ended up, I knew in that moment who I had to help, right? It was the first person who ever put me on TV. And I called him in and I said, Jeff, I'm going to change your life because you changed mine. I hounded him and hounded him and hounded him and hounded him for months to write this book. And he didn't want to do it because he was a reporter and his kids worked for me at my retail stores. And I was like, Jeff, you're not an anchor. You've got to do this. This is going to change your life. He's now a millionaire. He's no longer um, a reporter. He owns one of the largest media companies in the United States. And the, the book is dedicated to me and his wife and his daughter because I changed his life. Writing a book has been something that has been in my field. It's not the first time someone's asked me to write a book. It's the third. And so I said no every single time because it didn't feel right. I think that this is going... Right now, there's there's a little ebook you can get on my website. If you yes. Yes my subscription, um, which just kind of gives you an introductory. 
I think that the big book will come probably um, July of next year. I'll get a ghost writer to work with me and put it all together like you listening to the whole podcast and then kind of, you know, taking the best part of each section. And then she, that person and I, she and I hopefully <laughs> um, will get together and create something that then will be tangible. Um, I do coaching and I do speaking and um, right now that's where I am, but I want to create a workshop and a series for people to be able to do and take and use on a daily basis. Right now, I'm in the process of creating three different meditations. Um, so people can go and download them from the website. Um, one for abundance, you know, one for letting go. Yeah. One for astro planning when you go to sleep, how you can use that energy Cause look, if you're going to be asleep for eight hours marinating in something, let's marinate in something that's going to elevate our consciousness to allow us to manifest greatness into our lives. Absolutely. Now, let's get into, for our listeners, what is manifestation? Because it's a word we kind of know, but maybe some of us don't understand what it is and how it applies to their lives. So every single thing in our life is a manifestation. So, you know, here I am with this little water bottle. It has a filter inside of it, so I no longer have to use plastic bottles. Somebody somewhere thought, if I make a stainless steel bottle with cute little foam thing and put a very high-end filter in it, I would be able to save X amount of fish and X amount of this and da 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 So they create, in their mind, they were probably sitting on their back porch one day saying, I'd like to help the world this way. And through that energy, it manifested into this company with delicious water that help, hurts nobody, correct? Correct. Every single thing, the shirt that I'm wearing, this necklace, your home, your, your beautiful couch behind you, um, everything came as a thought that then manifested into a reality. The difference is, is that so many people get blocked in their thinking about what it is that they're supposed to be here on earth doing. And they believe that they're, it doesn't matter, or they just want to have a job, or they just want to have health insurance. So many small vibrational things, as opposed to connecting with the fact that you and God are not separate. And that this spiritual energy that created that tree, that bird, the person who created this, Thinks of you every second of the day, every moment and every minute. You're always in co-collaboration to bring about what you were here to do. And so many people get trapped in this idea that it's going to be too big or too hard or they're not important enough or they don't matter, and they do. And it's in small and in small and big ways, every single vibration that we connect to impacts our entire planet so for me i wanted people to understand that manifestation isn't something over there or over there it's already happening you're doing it every single day and if you're doing it on a low vibration and you're you already have what you have right now imagine if you shifted to this higher vibration then what could you download then what could you appear what would your life look like if you were living the life that you were here to do and that you planned on doing before you came here. And so I think so many people get trapped in religious contexts, mm -hmm. social contexts, like I'm supposed to be this because of my family or I want to be the first person in my family to do this. So then they carry the burden of the entire family mm -hmm. instead of them individually saying, no, Michelle Juanita Lamont has to understand who she is in order for herself to be the highest, best self, just like Carol Ann does. And Carol Ann has this big, beautiful, bright light that she's going to give to the planet Earth. But if she's in the room with no windows and no light bulbs and no flashlight, we miss out on everything that you are. And that's you, individually you, each and every one of us. And I don't want any more sleeping bodies. 
I don't want any more souls going untapped. I want people to realize that they don't need anything. They don't need, they don't need to buy anything from me. I'll love it if they did, but they don't need to. And they don't need anything. They already have it. And once they connect to that highest and that best version of themselves, mm -hmm. you just, even when bad things happen, you process them so differently. And you wake up so differently, and the water tastes different, and the air is different, and the sky is different, and you let go differently. You know, um, I think a big thing that people have is that they get stuck on the chapter. Mm. Sometimes it was chapter two of their book, and their, their spirit guides, their angels, and their higher self are saying, we're on chapter 14, catch up. So they keep shoving things into our lives. Some of them are digital synchronicities. Some of them are actual twin flame type energy where you're like, oh, I hate this person so much. Well, no, you shouldn't because that person's here to help you evolve. If everybody was like sunshine, rainbows, and, and you know, cupcakes, then we wouldn't learn anything and we would be even more dead inside, you know? Um, so I don't want anybody to believe that they're soul isn't as important as Oprah's or Kim Kardashian's, um, with both of which I've manifested. And um, we are all the Beyonce, the Kim Kardashian, you know, the, I can't, LeBron James of our lives. And we just don't realize it. So we give our power away to these idols. We look up to them, we're like, oh. and So we, true. Right? And we should take the mirror and go, oh. Right, so true. Because we are the LeBron James, we are the Kim Kardashians, you know, we are the the empresses and the emperors of our souls. And I don't want people understanding or feeling disconnected to that vibration of abundance anymore. It's 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 done. And I thought, let's move you in, let's bring you in, let's make sure that you get this. Now, how do people, because the way we manifest good things and, and beautiful things in our life, we can also manifest all the bad that happens to us too, right? Um, how do folks stop doing that? How do they stop living in this dark, you know, corner of, of their souls and pull themselves out into the light and say, that's it. Today's the first day that I'm going to stop doing this and change my life. How does someone start doing that? Well, if they've a if they're asking themselves that question, they started. Wonderful. And so just by being aware of the fact that you're in a dark room and that there isn't very much light and that you're on the treadmill of defeat, that you can start to say, maybe I can't get off the treadmill this moment, but I can go from a level eight to a level six from a six to a five to a four to a three to a two to where I can get off of it. And I think the tools and the techniques that I talk about in the podcast really allow anybody at any stage and any level to connect with it because, listen, I've gone from eating government cheese to eating brie. And I can, I can tell you that there's a world of difference and the cheese was in the same fridge the whole damn time. I was just opening it and only seeing that government cheese. And I'm like, rah, rah, you know. And so if you are in that place right now, you're thinking whatever it is, you despise your husband, you wish that your kids loved you more, you wish that people appreciated your big heart, um, you wish that for this job you more. Those are not your thoughts. Those are your higher self and your guides and your angels going like this, shoving you in a way that make, is trying to make you turn attention. And once you even ask that question, you're starting on the right path. You're going down, you're going to start exploring and checking things out and seeing like, why does, why does she have everything? Why does he have everything? How did I get stuck here? Well, you're not. You're choosing at this moment in time to sit in that dark room and all you have to do is walk through this door and there's going to be a whole lot of sunshine. 
but it's very scary because what if you succeed? Mm, that's a very good question. And so many people would rather just be vanilla ice cream than, you know, some sort of 31 flavors that is available to them. Um, and they get so sedentary in their thoughts of what what's possible for me. I'm going to tell you right now what's possible for you. Everything. Happiness, joy, and abundance. There is nothing that you're thinking about that hasn't been pre-planned for you before you came here. You just need to start opening different doors. I think and that includes all the bad stuff, too, obviously. <laughs> okay, so, you know, um, I would say that there's a vibration to everything. And I, I don't think anything bad has ever happened to anyone, even myself. And as you know, I've was abandoned, thrown away, sexually assaulted, um, verbally, uh, you know, in a terrible marriage. And then, um, obviously, tried to commit suicide. So, had miscarriages. I don't believe any one of those things were bad. I believe that all of those things were here to help me, the soul, evolve. And if I can look at the situation as not suffering, but opportunity, what did I learn about myself? What did I learn about other people? And how is this new vibration going to impact me? Is it going to drag me down to a darker place? Or am I going to say, okay, you know what? Now I know I'm never going to talk to that type of energy again. I'm going to trust my intuition more at whatever it is that it reveals to you. It's always teaching us something. When people like to say, well, if I had, you know, if Oprah was my mom, you know, if blah, blah, blah was my sister, I would be the most famous person in the world. If my parents gave me, you know, a million dollars to start my business, I'd be successful. That's a lot. Because you already have a million dollars. You just haven't opened the right door yet. And the, it's not about the million dollars. It's about the freedom of your life. I don't want I don't want to dedicate manifestation to financial wealth, although right. a part of it, right? Um, it's about living a life that allows you your soul to feel free all the time. They feel limitless and happy. And if that means you just go fishing, you teach people how to fish and you live in a small little place above a mountain and you go down every day and you teach people to fish for the rest of your life and when people fish, they get a spiritual connection with the earth, then you are helping every single one of us because you're living in your highest and your best self. And that's really what it's about. I, I was very disenfranchised when I first started out down this journey because everything was about M-O-N-E-Y. Every teacher that I found, everybody, manifest money, become a yes. Blah, 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 blah. And so they take people down this road, and what happens is you're on the hamster wheel, and you're on a different treadmill now. It's, a, it's a, almost worse because you thought that you found something, and then you find out that they just want to sell you this $79.99 package times a million. And listen, I'm sure one day I'll be one of those people that are selling a package to a million people, but it will not be about you attaining money, it'll be about you attaining spiritual abundance, emotional abundance, and walking in your true path. Because how many people win the lottery and then end up in jail or losing all their money? Absolutely. It's a huge percentage. I think I saw on a show once it was something like 75%. Now, if you don't change anything about your spiritual being, and I hand you a check for a million dollars. Exactly. Right. So to me, I did not want to, you know, harp on or talk about or be that because when you are on your correct path, that won't matter anymore. That freedom, that joy that you have, it will be, the. it'll have no check. There will be no amount of money that somebody could pay you to go to another life where you made more money. 
And the abundance is not something I'm against. I mean, I drive a nice car. I have a nice house. I like to go Sure, to everybody wants to do well. Yes. But I couldn't have attained, um, I couldn't be, I had all those things before I started the podcast. And I still wanted to die. And so I can tell you that it's the spiritual evolution of your highest self that will allow you to remove those blocks about emotions or money or relationships or whatever it is that keeps us locked in that dark room where we feel so alone and so helpless and scared and and we're not we're not alone we're not helpless we are absolutely abundant in every single way and once we turn that dial we turn the frequency we start to understand all of these things that have been happening in our lives and we're like Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. And when you have those moments, it's almost like you're angry that you didn't notice them before. Mm -hmm. You're like, ah, oh, I saw that number for 12 years and now this led me here and now I have my dream job and I'm, I just met my fiance and this and this and this and I get that in my coaching a lot. But now with the podcast, I get people I don't know messaging me because they feel like they know me so intimately, and they're like, hey, girl, <laughs> today this happened, and I saw this, and then this happened, and they're telling me all these incredible stories, and it feeds me. It gives me, every time I read one of those, I'm like, I feel like I'm a millionaire. And because um, I know that one soul, she is now going to react different in traffic. She's now going to react different at the grocery store. She's now going to react different with her family. She's going to interact different with her friends. And the way that she processes her life moving forward for the rest of her life will be in the energy of love and of forgiveness and of abundance. And that so reminded me of your grocery story yeah. uh, adventure. I can't wait for folks to hear that. That was absolutely crazy. I mean, I... I literally, you know, when the when the security guard was like, I'm walking you to your car, and he had this handlebar mustache, you know, I, I just thought, did you not just see what I just did? I, I am absolutely fine going to my car, and I don't want to give it away, but, right. you know, um, I don't go to that store anymore, um, obviously, but I think about that woman a lot, and, and I really... I really do. I think that that was one of the first times that I thought, wow, um, I think I just saved somebody's life. Yeah, it sounded that way. And her Now, let's talk about, you know, since we're on the topic of hostility, let's talk about um, a lot of people are feeling that they're living in a hostile universe. And you go over that in great detail in your podcast and let's just touch upon that because a lot of people that I'm talking to their their words okay the way that they're talking is full of anger whether it's for political reasons whatever uh, over the situation we're in today um, you know with the bug that we're living with you can't even say the word on social media because They'll ban you, so you have to be really careful. But there's so much hostility, so much fear, and it's. I was told that in order for the light to truly reveal itself, that's okay. I have a dog too. Uh, we love our pooches, our furry little friends. Um, in order for the light to to fully reveal itself, it has to shine on the darkness and let the darkness be seen. And I think that's what a lot of us are experiencing. There's so much of that darkness, but it's not necessarily bad, right? Because it's revealing itself. It's showing itself for who it is. But what can folks do to stop living and feeling that awful? You go on social media, everything is negative and hateful. Like, what can we do, Michelle? Well... First of all, um, you know, that duality, I get why a lot of people feel that way. Um, but it's a reflection of us as a society, really and truly. We all have had dark, dark days and dark situations, and then we, we, we see light. If you are 
consistently giving your powerful energy to somebody that you don't know to a disease, a pandemic that you don't have, then you're raising the energy that it holds. If you were to just not give your energy to that, do what you can, vote. Contribute to the party that matters to you most. Right. Say, uh, light a candle. Um, be healthy. Stop eating food that is making you sick. Don't do situations that cause you to feel panicked. And concentrate on you. And no matter what is going on around us, it shouldn't impact what's going on inside of us. People are thriving right now. And it's so easy to have this group mentality of the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Um, I, I, I spoke to somebody yesterday who was starting a new business that just got an investment of $5 million. God bless. Wow. So people are still living their lives. And we like to pretend that the whole world is coming to an end. And the higher vibrational energies are like, y'all go ahead and be angry and mad and frustrated. I've done everything I can do. I'm going to concentrate now on working on me internally and emotionally. It doesn't mean that these things don't exist. It doesn't mean that these things don't matter. But at the end of the day, if you look at our, we have never had a pandemic in a hundred years. So I totally get that part. But even in 1920, when it did happen, People walk around with things around their face in the 1920s. I mean, history has a way of repeating itself so our evolutional cycle can happen. We're going into this 5D shift reality here on the planet Earth. And so what that means is we're breaking away from these old oligarchs that are keeping us trapped in what we look like physically, um, what our sexual verb is, his, her, you know, whatever it is, she, he, him, her, they. Because those are constraints that do not allow us to live in the abundance of our life. And so when we concentrate on those low vibrational thought patterns and energy, we're only attracting more low vibrational thought mm -hmm. patterns and energy. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I understand. I understand it's so easy to get wrapped up in something somebody said every single day and how ridiculous it is and how frustrating it is. Yes. But what happened if you didn't hear it? What happened if you lived in some island in the middle of the Pacific and you didn't have television and you never knew that this thing was going on? Wouldn't your life just go on? Absolutely. So we are on our own island, you know, and so we're choosing to give something that isn't truly affecting us in this moment in time more energy than it should. And we're taking away from our own life. And who does that benefit? People who want you to be down. People who want you to think in that vibration. Fear is a very big way of controlling a lot of people. So true. And I believe in fear. And I think fear is a liar. And if you have fear, it's because you don't have enough love. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, the opposite of fear is love. And if you don't absolutely love you, and I mean love yourself, I don't say that you don't put on makeup and try to look cute, or if you're a man, you know, take care of yourself, shave, trim your beard, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, look, these lashes, I didn't, I wasn't born with these lashes. I just <laughs> done everything, you know? Um, and, but that's the way that I feel the best version of Michelle. Sure. And so for me to be my love light energy, I do what I need to do to make sure that I'm my highest and my best self. And it's so easy. It's so easy. I mean, just two days ago, something really bad happened. And I was for a half hour, like shocked. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then I said, hold on. Why don't you go for a walk? Why don't you meditate? Why don't you journal? Why don't you talk to your guides, you know? And within 25 minutes, I was laughing again and having a good time. And I was like, all right, I'm just not going to give that the energy that it wants. I'm going to give Michelle the energy that she needs in order to help somebody. And 
ended up being that this single, that day that I was very scared and very stressed out, um, this single mom, her son went into the hospital and needed medical uh, care. And I couldn't pay for her whole medical bill, but I just messaged her on social media. I don't know her. And I said, can I pay for something? Here's 50 bucks. And she legitimately sent me a video of her and her son picking up the medicine that she had just told them she couldn't buy. Oh, wow. And she was crying. And it was $50. You know what I mean? I mean, even if you're poor, you can do $10 to somebody and do top ramen, right? Absolutely. And so for me, every single day, I ask one question, how can I serve? Mm. Put me in a position, in a place or around somebody that I can serve. And I'm doing that every single day in my sleep with the podcast because people are listening. And I mean, my, my podcast producer today told me that the average podcast has 100 downloads in four weeks. What? Unless I didn't realize it was that low, the number. Well, unless you're a celebrity or people. Right, like Joe Rogan or something. Yeah. Because think about it. There's half a million podcasts out there. Yes. Who is going to be searching for yours when you right. go along all these pages? Just in my category, three weeks ago, I went in at 1,783. And yesterday, I was 64th. Wow, that's an amazing jump. So the point is that when somebody tells you there's a million people already doing it, who cares? You're right. one, you know? Right, right. And you don't know what this is doing. Like, you don't know what this calling is giving you. You don't know what you're going to be affecting and impacting. And even if your whole life on earth was just to help one person that one time then, and you live this nice, peaceful, you know, you're a teacher, you have two kids, mm. but you elevate your soul into a way that you are a high vibrational frequency, then you impact somebody's life for the rest of their life, and that person impacts thousands of people. And sure. That, and that and it, could, it could be in small ways, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so many, oh, sorry about that. That's so okay. Many people, um, get caught up in that they have to have this big splash. Um, and I think that that's the ego part of us. You know, we want to believe that we're so important that so many people are connected to it. If I were to die today, I know that a thousand times somebody benefited from me in three weeks of what I've done, right? And I could be, I could really, I could answer, I could meet creator and be like, dude, as soon as I figured this out, I did everything I could to help people understand that they already had everything they needed to be abundant. And I treated everything that you gave me with love and care and kindness. Uh, for example, just two days ago, I was leaving the hair salon and um, coming out of downtown Dallas. And I'm not familiar with these with the roads because I live in a suburb. And um, I'm, I'm getting onto the freeway, and I suddenly re I'm singing my song, and I'm driving my car. You know, I'm not really paying attention. I look over at this huge, like jumbo wheels. I don't know what they're called. Kind of truck is fighting me because his lanes have merged. He's literally got two of his wheels on the side of the freeway instead of stopping and just like he's coming in i'm already on it ah merging so i obviously had the right of way but he decided he wanted and once i realized what he was doing i just looked at him and all of a sudden he's flipping me off and oh goodness and i just got right over into the other lane and i was like please god allow him to know that he's a beautiful divine light and he doesn't need to act this way let him see his highest and his best self. Now, the shell from 2005 would have fought that fight. We would have been both trying to get onto that exit. We would have both been 
messing up our cars. We would have right. had insurance claims. We would have been in a hospital. You know, his his angry girlfriend or wife in the car would have gotten out and pulled me by my new hair and who knows what, right? That's because so I, true. I couldn't be wrong and I couldn't, you know, whatever. But I was like, wow, okay, let me get over <laughs> right now because I didn't know I wasn't familiar, but he was so angry. He's not angry at me. So it's true. Not. He's angry at himself. He's angry at himself. And I just happened to be the girl in the BMW that looks so like, like here I am looking all cute and he's in, you know, shabbily kind of guy. Right. Putting all of his hate on me and my angels were like, get over. And I was like, I'm going to get over. <laughs> and then I blessed him. And um, I think in that moment, you get these opportunities to be love, light, energy in the world. I could have stopped all these cars from having traffic, right? It could have shut down hundreds of people's day. Somebody who was late to pick up their kid could have lost custody. You know, all of these ripple effects. That See, we don't think of that. In that moment, we're not thinking that. We're, we're letting our ego just take over the entire moment. Absolutely. And what is ego? Edging God out. <laughs> right. And so in that moment, I really could have won, right? Because my car was smaller and faster and, and newer. And um, But I just decided to get over. And I really wasn't paying attention. And I think that's why he was getting angry. Because I didn't know this road. And I wasn't familiar with the merging, you know. I thought I just was listening to the computer going in three fourths of a mile, you know. So I'm like, all right, and I'm singing my song and driving down the road. And all of a sudden, I look over and I see this, ah, 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 and I'm like, what's going on? And then I got <laughs> over. And the funny thing was, the lane next to me was totally open, so he could have gone behind me and around, sure. right? So, but what I did is I got in the next lane, sped all the way up. Another car let me in, 20 cars up, and I'm good, right? And so, but it's so easy for each and every one of us to be an angel to somebody's life every single day. And we just live in our own energy of lack all the time. And so we believe that if other people are succeeding, and we're missing out on something. Right, right. You know, you mentioned angels. Now, you cover that really beautifully in one of your podcasts. Can you talk about angels for a minute or two? Because um, when you talk about connecting to your angels or your spirit guides, let people know for a minute what that experience is like. Do you visually see them? Do you feel them? Like, what is that all about? Have you ever, Carol Ann, been alone and thought somebody else was there? Absolutely. That's what it's like. And everybody has it. Everybody has a deja vu. Everybody has a moment where they're like, I feel like I'm getting this or intuition. And I love this quote. Um, when, you pray, when, when, when you pray to God, intuition is God talking back. So higher self or angels are basically just that. It's a higher connective to your intuition that allows you to communicate with energy that's guiding you. Well, we're never alone. You know, the Buddhists believe that God was so worried that humans would mess up the soul that he put just a tiny little drop of the soul in you, and that behind you is actually your soul. So your soul would fill up, you know, a half of the football field, so big and magnanimous and so powerful. And we are so, we're brought up to think such limiting ways in such a small idealistic way that we're broken, we need to be, we've got to do all this stuff to be right, to be forgiven, whatever it is. There's no angels and God and energy like that. They don't see it that way. They see you as perfect and divine. And once you've forgiven yourself from whatever it is that you've done or allowed to have been done to you, then you're opening up this energy that allows you to 
feel very confident in what you're thinking. Angels and spirit guides is your intuition on fire. If you're a person that has to ask five people their opinion on something, you are way far away from hearing what your higher self is trying to tell you. Oh, that's such a good point. I love that. Yeah, and if you're somebody that sits on a decision, can't make a decision, oh, I've got to figure out this, or it's got to be the right time, or this has got to happen, you're the same person. You're all the way on the other side. When you are connected to the highest and the best version of yourself, you, things seem to just flow. May not be perfect. I gave you three examples just this week of things that happened to me. And um, process them in a way that you feel much more comforted. You feel much more secure. You feel much safer. Because in the practices of communicating with that energy, that light force energy inside of us, we turn on the ability for that higher self get these downloads, to get this information, to process this in a way that doesn't seem confrontational to our normality. Most people reject it. Most people are like, oh, that's not for me. That's, that's you know, um, woo-woo stuff, um, whatever it is. Well, even in science, right, it's 99.9999999 because even in science, they want to leave that little bitty fraction. Absolutely. Of right. And we are that fraction. So once we take that 0.11111% and we give it a little bit of power, all of a sudden, we're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I've heard this song six times. Why do I keep hearing this song? And then you look at the title of the song and then you look at who sung it or there's something in it that was a message for you, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I know exactly what I need to do. I know exactly da 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 Because they're always communicating. They're always with us. They're always talking to us. We're just turned into AM, and they're on FM. And so That's such a good way to put it. And once we tune into that frequency, it's unbelievable how much peace and calm we have. And you have to remember... I was the person that was ADD. I had a million plans. I had like 20 spirals for one subject because I wasn't going to fail. You know, I had all these, well, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And the more I tried to control things, the harder life became. And I couldn't just let go. I couldn't let go. I couldn't, I couldn't just feel. I felt like if I didn't do it, if I didn't hustle, if I didn't, control and mastermind everything that I was going to end up homeless again. And that was my biggest fear was to be back where I was when I was 10 years old. So I lived in that chapter two for so long that every single thing I did, not knowing, was at reacting out of fear instead of love. When you react out of love, everything is different. Just like the the guy in the truck, right? That guy, you know, he probably thinks he won something. I know what I already had. I already knew I was a winner, right? I don't, I don't need his validation. I didn't lose anything. He didn't win anything um, because I'm in a different energetic place. And so when we connect to that higher self, we really start to understand that we're processing things in a way that is attracting so many things that we fear. And when we put our energy into the fear instead of to the love, we miss out on so much peace and so much happiness and so much joy because we're just constantly going through the same cycles over and over again and expecting different results. And as we know, one of my faves, Albert Einstein, he says that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Well, of course you feel frustrated. Of course you feel like you're going crazy because you are. You're literally repeating yourself. It might be a different, the person might be called something different. It might be Jim instead of Joe. It might be Susan instead of Stephanie. 
But until you get that lesson, you're bound to repeat it because you're going to be on repeating the same thing over and over again. And when you're connected to that higher self, when you meditate, when you go outside of nature without your electronics, when you turn the TV off and you turn the social media off and you just sit and say, well, what? I'm Carol Ann. I want to be able to communicate with my higher self, my angels and my guides. What does that look like? Show yourself to me. Communicate with me. Send me a sign. <clears throat> all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing all the signs that only you would recognize. And that's their way of letting you know you are never alone. We had this whole other plan for you. You opened the wrong door. Go this way. Go east. You're going west. Go north. You're going south. And they'll start to process it in a way that you'll expect the sign. I mean, now, if I don't see a sign, I'm like, hey. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I want to ask you, where do you see yourself in two years from now? Like, with being a manifestation guru, like, what's your ultimate goal? What are your plans? What do they look like? So we have something to look forward to. Yes. Um, you know, I would, I, I hate to make any plans because, you know, when you say, if you make, you want to hear God laugh, make plans. Um, I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast yet, but I was set up to do a six city tour this year. Um, I was in August heading to Tonga, which is, which is a 27 island channel outside of Fiji to swim with whales. <laughs> wow. So my six city tour was I was in an RV. I would have it was all sponsored, and I was doing. I was trying to get six thousand people to meditate on peace um, in six cities and start to raise the vibration of the planet, and that was my plan. And the day before I was supposed to pick up the RV, the week before I was supposed to reserve it, mm -hmm. the Corona shutdown happened. So when I make a plan the whole plan falls apart, right? Because we can only move in the energy that was right in front of us. I want to always serve. I want to be a person that when you're having a bad day, you go listen to episode 120 times, right? Because that resonates with you. So whatever this vibration is, I ask for it to be amplified on every level that it can be to help as many people as possible so I can serve in whatever way possible. So I'm open to everything and attached to nothing because I truly want to be a vibrational energy that's like floating and moving in an energy that is of a higher energy, of, a, of an abundant energy. And I don't know exactly what that means. You know, for me, I truly hope that the podcast reaches huge numbers and that so many people um, enjoy it and they really benefit from it and that it, it takes a whole life on its own. One of these little um, dreams that I had was that I was going to um, an arena or, or something. I'm going speaking somewhere and I'm in the future. I'm in an SUV, which I don't have an SUV now. So um, I'm in an SUV and I'm in, I'm stuck in traffic and I just passed the billboard with my blue background from the cover art for Manifesting Miracles. And I just passed it and I get in traffic and I look over and there's two girls in a car and I can see my podcast on their screen, on their car screen. But we're stuck in traffic so I rolled the window down and I said, hey girls, what are you listening to? And they said, what? And I go, what are you listening to? And they're like, oh, Michelle Lamont. And I said, you mean Michelle J. Lamont? And they're like, yeah. And I take my sunglasses off and I wave and they start screaming and I wake up. That is so incredible. So if that ever happens, that, <laughs> that fulfilled my fantasy. But it means that in some way, shape, or form, I'm going to be on some sort of journey that will take me to a place where whether it's a cult-like small amount or it's millions and millions of people, I'm 
I, I just want to be used in a way to serve the planet and to help people really lift themselves up and connect with the vibration of abundance because the more people that feel that way, the better we are as a society, the better we are as a human race. And um, I think it'll take me to wherever it is I'm supposed to go next. And, um, you know, I want to get back to speaking and I want to do, I'd love to do um, host events at like a three day thing somewhere at a yes. hotel, you know, something of that nature. Um, and I want to go swim with my whales in Tonga. Um, so Tonga is a 27 island chain about an hour outside of Fiji in the South Pacific, where from August to October, 80% of the humpback whales migrate and give birth there. Wow. That and, sounds incredible. Right? And so they, they're not open to everybody. You have to apply to go on vacation there. And they're very particular. They, got, they won their um, freedom from England um, during the World War II when they let the ships all harbor there. Um, and so they, they have pristine waters and they mm -hmm. own hotels and they have like, you, you have to rent a room from somebody in the island of Tonga. It's not, you know, we're not going to be going to the Four Seasons in Tonga. Um, and so um, I want to go and, and be in the ocean with my whales and see the little baby whales and the mama whales and, um, and, and, and maybe then go to Fiji and have an event. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds event like awesome. Hop over to Tonga and go and float with the whales. I, I, I honestly say that I'm so excited to be a catalyst for people's growth and people's change, but I want people to realize that it has nothing to do with me, that their higher selves and their angels brought them to this podcast, to this message, because they were sick and tired of them bumping into the walls in the dark. And... If I never meet them, that's okay. I just want them to live a high vibrational life where they feel like this was the first time they ever heard the truth. This was the first time that it ever made sense. And that they can, in small bites, take bigger ones and bigger ones until they're having a meal, until they're having a buffet, until it's a limitless food that's just in their cupboards all the time. So for me, I just ask that wherever I'm supposed to go and whatever I'm supposed to do that I do it with the honor and the light that I feel I now am connected to in, an, in, in a limitless way. I mean, I don't think you can ask for more. And you know, you've, you've, from the moment we started talking, you mentioned that your life's mission is to help other people. So that shines through you so clearly, even through technology Michelle, and I'm very grateful to have met you. Aww. And I hope that we can stay friends. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I can actually feel your spirit shine through you. It's people have to experience it. It's incredible. Now I, 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 I now I understand what brought you to where you are today. I really do. I, I not only heard it, but I felt it. So, and I honestly, I, I do a very deep meditation before I do the podcast. I surround it with crystals, the microphone, I stage it. I pray over all of everybody who hears it. I ask that the angels in their life get turned them on. I feel like there's a lot of energy that I am emulating through this microphone. Right. because I want your heart to feel this the same way that mine does. And I want you to know that if you were right here in front of my house, you'd be welcome in. That is just, it gives me chills. Thank you so much. It was a true joy meeting you. And of course, I'm going to make sure that we have running across the screen your podcast. Because as I said in the beginning, folks, you have got to go and listen. It's truly transformative to, to listen. And you may have to listen to them several times to really pick up on the powerful message in each one of them. So please, please head on over and give it a listen. And I will have 
your podcast link in the description as well as running across screen. Also, your website. Now, yes. do you offer um, services on there, Michelle? Yes. In case folks want to reach out to you, tell us just a little bit about that before we go. Okay. Um, you know, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for abundance, for clearing blocks, for relationships, whatever it is. And then the other thing is that people can hire me to host an event or a Zoom. Um, there's a, a sports franchise that I can't talk about that has just hired me to do a Zoom for their players. Um, wow. Yeah. So um, just to give a 10 minutes of an energy shift. Um, so anything like that, I'm here for. Any way that I can be of service, meaning coaching or speaking or zooming or skyping or um what's the other one i don't know but whatever it is you can go to my website and you can send me an email and say how do we get you here and then we'll figure it out um so for me i just i really and truly desire that people will listen and i really suggest that they listen more than once um, I listen to my own podcast because it might sound vain or something, but it's not. I don't remember a lot of the times what I'm saying because I do it with my eyes closed the majority of the time. Mm. So it's just coming. I let it channel out of me, whatever is supposed to be. And I go back and I'm like, oh, that was a good point. Or that was something like, oh, I don't remember saying that. You sure, know, sure. Oh, and I think that it's very beneficial, like the one about what manifestors do before they go to sleep. Mm. You should listen to that every night before you go to sleep. You're downloading that, processing that information. Another thing that I think is kind of funny um, is that the number one comment I get, besides the one that you mentioned, is that people love my voice. Um, they said it makes them feel like they're they're they feel very comforted by it. Yes. Very, and so if it does, and you can go to sleep to it, then you'll be sitting there for eight hours or six hours, or however long you sleep, um, with a higher vibrational charge than watching the news and letting it go to off or whatever you were previously doing. Um, in fact, I have it's only been three weeks, and there's three women who. Every day they message me that they they fall asleep to me and they wake up to me. They fall asleep to me, they wake, they listen to the sleeping one and they listen to the awake one. They listen and these are all free, right? All you need to do is go in and write a little review, share it. If you want to pay me, pay me with your energy. And um, get people lit up, get people connected. Um, if your sister, if your friend at work. If your brother, you know, if your brother-in-law, whatever it is, isn't in the same place you are or you want to feel better because, or you feel better because of your listening to the podcast, the greatest thing that you can do for me is make somebody listen. Because I think if you listen to episode one, you're hooked. Absolutely. Absolutely. I also love the out of alignment one. You're not depressed. You're just out of alignment. That resonated with me um, in, a, in a great way. And, you know, because there's so many times you'll get up and you'll go, oh, I feel depressed. And then and now instead of thinking that, I just go, no, I am not. I'm just out of alignment. I just have to realign. And it really helps a lot because I think that word tends to get overused in our vernacular. You know, we use it instead of saying, you know, I'm not in the greatest mood. We right away reach for that word, you know, and it's. So that specific episode, I also appreciated so much. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really am honored that you think that way and that it's helping you because what that means is it resonated so much with you because you are probably surrounded by and know people that are feel that way. And yes. So you are lifting yourself and you're aligning yourself. Now, all those people that you know that I'll never know, you're going to be the example and you're going to be able to talk to them in a way you could never have talked to them before. That is so true. And so you'll put, turn them on to this and your vibrational code. Then you will see unlimited abundance in your life manifest and grow because now that you're in alignment, your angels and your guides are going, we've got an open channel right here with Carol Ann. She yes. 
faster and faster and faster, going back to her alignment. She's in her energy field of alignment. So we trust her. We trust her to give her more abundance because we know that by giving her this abundance, she's not going to waste it. She's not going to go backwards. She's not going to be a low vibrational energy. She is going to lift everyone around her. And the more that you live in that vibration of abundance, where you want to be a healer, where you want to heal yourself and others around you, that light will turn on in them. And then they're going to do it to those five and those five and those five. And that one vibration that you open will impact thousands of people because we don't know yesterday i have or on tuesday when i got my hair done i have no idea how many people me not playing the car war game with him impacted that's so true it's so true i mean that could have escalated to something crazy so rush hour um, that guy probably could have lost his job that day. He might have nothing to live for in his mind. Right. You don't got know. out a gun and killed me. And hey, so, road rage is a bad, it's a bad situation. And in Texas, you know, everyone has a gun. So, oh, see, we need to start thinking this way, that our actions have consequences regardless of how small they are. We, we really need to globally start to think that way. And your podcast helps people to get there. It really does. It lets you see that you're not alone in this world, that you're connected to every other being in such a special way. And that, you know, the whole goal is to help each other while we walk this planet. It seems like a simple premise, but so difficult to get to. Well, because we've been, we've grown up in this ego-driven society, and we're a spiritual being, and we're playing an ego game instead of playing the spiritual. Right. Game. And the spiritual game is much different than the ego game. The vibration of ego is defensive and angry and fearful. The vibration of love is comfort, calm, and peace. You want to diffuse things instead of being right. You want to include people instead of excluding. And the inclusionary aspect of this podcast is that anybody from any background, from any walk of life, men, women, it does not matter, will find some sort of connection here that will make them a little bit brighter, a little bit happier, a little bit more aligned than they were if they had never listened at all. So true. Promise me we will talk again in the future. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I just recorded two more episodes, so you got two more coming down the pike. But oh, are they posted already? No, they're not posted yet, but I'm, I'm moving to, um, it looks like in December, I'm going to go to two a week. Um, because they're just downloading them and re-listening and re-listening so often. Like, the thousand is individual people. The, the number of times that they've listened is much higher. Oh, you know? of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I see this, like they, the, the podcast company, Instapod, um, they'll tell me, they're like, Hey, like, uh, this one episode got downloaded 221 times and it's in 10 countries now. So it's like Canada, India, wow. Belgium, Germany, the UK, the United States, um, uh indonesia um i'm trying to remember all of them but it's you know they show me the little map and they highlight it and they're like you know 1000 you know 1000 downloads here or like re-listens 200 at this episode 400 so i see that people are consuming it faster than i'm distributing it so the plan is for me to record enough that November gets done, and then I can do two a week in December, and then do that for three months and see how that goes, and um, take it from there. But I think that people really resonate with it because I just tell the truth, and I don't have any um, agenda here. Um, and if I do write a book and I sell one, awesome. You know, if I sell a million, cool. But my plan is that. Once this, the brand of the podcast, Manifest Miracles, takes traction, is that um, the majority of the money I make will go towards different charities. So I don't plan on keeping the money um, to an excess amount, um, just 
to use it to heal more people. So it'd be like Tom's shoes kind of idea, you know? Right, right, right. And I don't know where that's going, but that's what I've asked in my intention state is that I'm put in a position to help more people and I'm not ever in a position where um, I need more things. I, I, I want people to, you know, feel like what they're buying benefits the planet and not Michelle J. Lamont. Of gotcha. course, it benefits Michelle J. Lamont, but not in the and not in that sense. I don't I don't have a desire to have uh, four houses or anything of that. Of nature. course, of whatever course. whatever comes my way comes my way. But right. yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, I will make sure that we post on social media when you have new episodes coming too. So keep me oh. in the loop. Okay, and we'll definitely get the word. We'll help you get the word out there. Oh, thank, thank you so you much, so Michelle. Much. Thank so you. God bless. And I will talk to you again soon. I can't wait. And have a great day, Carol. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. Bye.